Doing well. So, in this video, you are in for a little treat. Um, <clears throat> because we're going to go over copper and its relation uh, to hair mineral analysis. Um, understanding copper is quite an advanced subject. And um, hopefully what I've done with um, the hairanalysis.report app is basically try and simplify this extremely complex process. It's, uh, it's definitely complex if you look at it without any knowledge. Uh, for example, a lot of people look at hair analysis tests and see a copper level like this, for example, and just think, oh, I've got low copper. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not copper toxic. I've got no hidden copper toxicity indicators and stuff like that. Um, but hopefully in this video, I'm going to show you, um, you know, what hidden copper toxicity looks like, what copper deficiency looks like. Um, and, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, words are interchangeable. So whenever someone says hidden copper toxicity, they might also say copper toxicity or biounavailable copper. Um, basically, this just means that there's uh, stored copper in various tissues in the body. The problem is with copper toxicity is it's quite hard to test for. You can test for it. You can do things like liver biopsies, which people generally do when they've got Wilson's disease. Um, but in general, it's quite hard to test for um, hidden copper or copper toxicity. One of the main reasons being is that copper can sort of lodge itself in a bio-unavailable form. Bio-unavailable basically means that the body, it's not available for the body to use. It's sort of stored away in a toxic form, in a, it's sort of an excess form. So it could be sort of stored away in the liver, little bits could be stored in the kidneys, little bits could be stored in the brain. You know, you could have like really low amounts in the brain and high amounts in the liver. And, you know, you can have a little bit that's more, uh, there might be more in this part of the liver and et cetera, et cetera. So in order for you to really like figure out whether someone's got uh, copper toxicity and where it is, you basically have to do a, liver, a, a biopsy of every tissue in the body which as we know is pretty impossible. So sort of the second best uh, test in my opinion that, that we've got now to use is a hair mineral analysis. You know, we know copper, toxic we know copper toxicity is a thing um, because you can get liver biopsy tests. Um, you know, people are aware of things like Wilson's disease, by the way, there's been many people that have, that have started mineral balancing or nutritional balancing and said they've got Wilson's disease, which is basically um, a disease where someone sort of has excess copper in the body. Um, but when they start a mineral balancing program, that that disease ends up going away. Um, so a lot of people think Wilson's disease is like genetical, but we've found so far, you know, doing this, doing the nutritional balancing program that every single case pretty much, and there's been hundreds of thousands of hair analysis tests um, of, of people who come saying that they've got Wilson's disease, um, just have like severe copper toxicity. Um, so how do, how have, how have, um, people like Paul Eck or Larry Wilson or, um, what's, how have these, uh, professionals, um, you know, understood copper toxicity, uh, with regards to a hair test? Uh, well, if you understand that copper toxicity is a thing to begin with, um, by various diseases and liver biopsies and this, that, and the other. Um, all you do is basically look at hundreds, hundreds of thousands. Um, I think trace elements have done over a million tests. Um, ARL is probably the same. You start to see patterns over and over and over and over again. Um, if this person's in this particular pattern, then there's a high likelihood that they're going to end up dumping copper in the future if they go on sort of a mineral balancing program and so on and so forth. And the more you do this over you know, hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands of times, you do see various indicators um, that, you know, um, are very strong um, to say that someone's got hidden copper. And the more indicators this individual's got, the chances of them actually dumping copper on, on a retest is very high. Um, usually people have sure signs of, hit, of copper toxicity problems uh, with in symptoms like insomnia, skin problems, <clears throat> uh, PMS, women's um, sort of reproductive issues, 
um, things like candida, overgrowth, racing mind, anxiety, fear, all these are symptoms of copper toxicity or hidden copper. And uh, when you do see a hair test, you'll probably see something similar to this one when people present them symptoms. Um, this is how accurate hair tests actually are. Um, you can, I can look at a hair test and I can tell someone their symptoms without them telling me. I think that's a really good um, indicator of how powerful hair analysis is. Um, and I can also, you know, it's, I can say to someone um, with a high degree of accuracy, probably how emotionally balanced they are, whether they're sleeping well or not. Um, so just, you know, I've obviously looked at probably a few thousand tests over the years, over 11 years. Um, not all my clients, just various different tests. So you also get a, a good um, feel for how accurate they are, and they are extremely accurate, especially if you get them done by ARL or trace elements. Um, who are like the gold standard. So with that introduction, um, <clears throat> it's not just about hidden copper or copper toxicity. Um, actually, the vast majority of the time we do actually supplement extra copper for people. So I'm going to go into that in more depth. Um, I've got quite a few different tests to go over um, to give you guys a bit of a, an understanding of how we work with copper toxicity and copper um with hair tests and copper deficiency um so hopefully it's going to give you a good idea of how we work with um, copper like i said most of the time people will actually be given copper even if they show a lot of hidden copper toxicity indicators i know i went off on a tangent before so you know when anyone says hidden copper copper toxicity buy unavailable copper they're usually talking about excess copper that's stored away in different areas of the body. Um, copper deficiency, you can sort of have copper deficiency in the blood, um, which we can generally see from the NAK ratio, uh, where people like need, uh, need uh, bioavailable copper in the moment for them to feel better, even though they've got a lot of hidden copper toxicity indicators. And uh, you can also have like copper deficiency, which is generally um, seen in people who've got fast oxidation. Uh, which we'll talk about later on in, in this video. Uh, but most people who are slow oxidizers um, generally have hidden copper toxicity. So we'll look at this first test. This is quite a common test. Obviously, most people that begin a mineral balancing program begin it because they're not feeling good. So you do see... Um, you do see various patterns over and over and over and over again, uh, which again is another good indicator of how powerful and accurate a hair mineral analysis is, um, because you can see a you know a test like this one and you know straight away exactly how a person's feeling, exactly what problems they've got, exactly what symptoms they've got. So, like I said, this is quite a common one. This is this would be someone who would be, would be presenting a lot of hidden copper toxicity symptoms, um, and you can see that from the report as well. So this person's in slow oxidation. Um, they've got um, a low sodium level, which is an indicative of their adrenal output. So basically, the lower the sodium level, the more burnt out this, the individual tends to be. Uh, also, a potassium level of one, which is what we call sympathetic dominance. Um, I don't really want to go too much into other patterns because we are focusing on copper. Uh, but this particular individual... Uh, would present a lot of hidden copper toxicity indicators, even though the copper level is down here. Now, one good thing about the application that I've built is that it kind of figures everything out for you. So if we scroll down to the copper section, you'll see that we've got a little area here, which uh, talks about whether this individual would be given copper. Like I said, the vast majority of the time they will be given copper. So in many respects, having sort of seen three red crosses here is like um, kind of rare. Um, well, it's, it's not the most common, um, but usually people will be um, given, given copper, which, will, which we will talk about more in the, uh, in the video. But down here, as you can see, this particular individual has, has got nine hidden copper toxicity indicators. So basically, the more indicators a person has, um, 
you know, the more chances that they've got hidden copper toxicity. And usually it's pretty obvious that they've got it because they've got so many symptoms relating to hidden copper toxicity as well. So as a practitioner, you can basically look at the symptoms, look at the test, merge them two together and basically say to the client, there's a very, very high chance that you, you're suffering from copper toxicity. It's basically 100% chance. Um, and uh, it's easy to see on retests because further down the line, you'll generally see people have copper dumps, which we will talk about in this video. Um, you're not going to see a person that's got 23 of 23 uh, because some patterns. So, for example, um, there is a hidden copper toxicity indicator for someone who's in a four lows pattern, um, but you can't be in four lows and the calcium shell at the same time. So, um, you know, basically you're not going to get, you know, 22, 23, 21. Um, but nine's a pretty high number, and uh, you can almost guarantee that this, when you look at this person's health intake form, they'll also have a lot of symptoms associated with um, copper toxicity. Now, why are we not supplementing copper? Well, in slow oxidizers, generally, um, all slow oxidizers have excess copper, have, have too, yeah, too much copper, to, copper inside of them already. Um, so generally, you don't have to supplement them with too much copper. Um, however, most slow oxidizers actually have a low sodium to potassium ratio. This particular individual hasn't. Um, so what we would generally do is not give them copper and give them zinc to balance out this ratio because zinc basically lowers an NAK ratio and copper helps to rise it and bring it, bring it into balance. So for this particular individual, they've got a slightly high ratio um, so they don't need particularly need copper at this time um, and you don't see this fairly often um, I will show it you in this video um, a hair calcium magnesium that's uh, less than three to one um, but I will be showing you in this video um, a report where there's a copper tick for each one um, and this that particular individual really needs copper uh, quite critically um, at times so um so yeah this that's a, a really common test for someone you know to get who's got basically a lot of hidden copper toxicity indicators um it's also important to distinguish between like an initial test and a retest obviously this is an initial and a retest on our application you can see the previous values too so we'll just go to the next one so on this particular test, it's not too dissimilar, uh, really, to the first one. Obviously, they're still in slow oxidation. Um, they're still in the calcium magnesium. Um, but this person's showing a high copper. Now, it's really important to distinguish the fact that this is an initial test. This is the first test we've got from an individual. So they've been trying to search for answers, not feeling good. They've got the first test and the copper level is high. Usually this is indicative when I was talking before about how copper tends to like situate, hidden copper tends to situate in various tissues in the body. This is just indicative that the copper's um, sort of um, situated itself in the hair tissue for the moment. Um, so it, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't give this individual copper at this moment in time. We'll talk about um, copper on a retest, dump, copper dumping on a retest and supplementing copper then, because sometimes it's a little bit different depending on how the person's reacting. Um, but usually when you, if you spoke to someone in this pattern and in this pattern, they'll basically be presenting the same um, symptoms of hidden copper toxicity. So just remember, if it's on an initial test and you've got a high copper, generally it's just a sign that copper has situated itself in the hair. Like I said to you before, if you did a, a brain biopsy, which is basically impossible, um, for some people you get a brain biopsy and they're not really showing any copper in there, but some others are showing high copper. It's just basically where copper's sit, uh, situated itself around the body. But in this particular test, if we scroll down to the copper section, you, you'll see here we've got a little tick. Um, so when the sodium potassium ratio is less than 2.5, then this person 
um, will need a little bit of copper supplementation. So this is quite a low NAK ratio, um, and uh, this this individual will need a little bit of copper in the uh, diet, usually as a supplement. Um, when the NAK ratio is low, it's generally indicative of low blood copper. Um, so this person needs some um, bioavailable copper given to them in the moment, which will generally make them feel much better. It's quite astounding, actually, how better a person can feel by having a little bit of copper in a, in a supplement. Um, the one that we recommend is, um, well, I actually recommend a new supplement called Speed Up, which is on um, my website. Um, going off on a slight tangent, but if you go to www.life.net forward slash Europe, which is the Europe one, or remove the Europe and you'll get the USA version. Um, a friend of mine has created a new Limcomin substitute called Speed Up, uh, which is basically the same as Limcomin, but it uses all active ingredients, um, something that the other Limcomin was lacking. Um, but the, yeah, the Speed Up or Limcomin has a copper keeler in it. And it will help to raise this level. So don't get confused if you might see like a high copper um, <clears throat> or a lot of hidden copper toxicity indicators. So yeah, this person's got high copper um, and uh, the hidden copper toxicity indicators aren't showing at the moment just because the copper's really high. Um, but once it comes down, then hidden copper toxicity, co toxicity indicators will start to show up. Um, but I mean, really, it's, it's still relevant. So this individual will be given copper because of the low NAK ratio, but again, don't be too worried about seeing like a high copper level, um, you know, or, or other hidden copper toxicity indicators. Um, like I say, this person does have hidden copper toxicity indicators. So you know, when this comes down, them indicators will show up, but this is actually indicative of hidden copper because it basically means that the copper situated itself in the tissue at this particular time, hair tissue on an initial test. So I hope that makes sense um, so far. Like I said, my report generally tries to figure all this out for you. So if you are a practitioner, um, you can feel quite secure in the fact that if you're you know, not understanding things, then this application is gonna help you out quite a lot to understand how to um, you know, deal with whatever hidden copper indicators or uh, copper deficiency indicators there are on the hair test. So we'll move on to the next test. Might have to reload, oh, here we are. So this is basically a copper dump. So like I was saying before, we've got sort of initial tests and retests. Whenever you see high copper on a retest, especially if it's if it's um, if the previous one was below the ideal level, which is two point five, we actually call this a copper dump. So uh, on a retest, this is a really good sign because it basically means that all of these hidden copper toxicity indicators that we were seeing um, on that first test, you know, it's just verifying that that was correct because now the individual is dumping copper. So if we go down to the copper section, we will get, um, some signs uh, that you know copper is dumping now whenever copper's dumping it can be a bit of a challenge uh, recommending clients or individuals with supplements and stuff because whenever someone's dumping copper usually they will get pretty um, pretty bad symptoms of copper dumping basically the symptoms are going to be very similar to the symptoms that they've already got insomnia, anxiety, sometimes panic attacks, um, you know, s skin issues. 
So basically what generally happens is as this when this copper comes out of these storage sites, people will get a big increase in these symptoms, sometimes quite extreme. So it depends. You've got to sort of like feel into it as a practitioner. Sometimes um, giving them sort of stimulatory supplements like Limcomin. So this person actually would be recommended Limcomin. This is where the intuition of a practitioner is really important. So this person usually would be recommended Limcomin. Um, however, if the person's basically presenting themselves with like really extreme symptoms, sometimes giving them the uh, more stimulatory supplements, which can be Limcomin, which can be sort of Megapan because they're in slow oxidation, this can sort of push the copper out even more. Um, and make the whole experience, you know, much worse. This is why it's really, really vital to work with a, a, a proficient practitioner, um, because usually I will say to people, look, just don't take these stimulating supplements for now. Um, you know, take other things like, you know, inos inositol or choline, um, molybdenum can be really helpful in these situations, B6. Um, you know, whenever whenever people are going through a copper dump, um, it says on here, and this particular article is a big article on copper elimination. Um, I do have copper dumping um, videos on this channel. One in particular is quite popular, um, and it basically goes through how to handle a copper dump and the supplements to take, you know, how to emotionally, you know, deal with it. Because these situations are usually... Uh, sometimes the most difficult situations and sometimes traumatic situations that people will go through because all of this excess copper that's been building up over years in storage sites is finally coming out and all of the symptoms associated with, associated with that will temporarily increase. Um, and uh, I remember when I went through my first <laughs> copper dump and um, it's pretty unexpected. You can't, you don't, it's difficult to really prepare for it. Um, so, um, so yeah, it's something to obviously you want to be working with a good practitioner when this happens and, and just making sure you understand how to deal with it. So, like I said, even though this individual would normally be given extra copper, that might not be the case. If the person's not really, you know, I know, I know people that have had copper dumps rarely, if I'm being honest and, and not really experienced a, a big, um, massive symptoms. Usually these people are generally have started in better health. They've usually got better liver health. So the symptoms are not too bad in these people. You know, they can generally get away still with taking a little bit of limcomin maybe to raise the NAK level. Um, but it's also important whenever you are dumping metals like this, especially things like copper, um, it can temporarily increase. It's not really showing it on this test, but it te can temporarily increase things like the, the adrenal ratio and potassium ratio and the oxidation rate because the copper is basically stimulating the body so much. Um, yes, it's, I did highlight it. Yeah, so like I said, I've tried to get the app to do a lot of the heavy lifting. So it does say here in bold, um, although this person's had, a, had an improvement in their adrenal response, this might be sort of um it might it might look better than it actually is underneath because the individual's currently dumping copper um, and this could stimulate the adrenal glands which temporarily shows improvements in sodium um but at the end of the day the main thing to focus on is this copper dump and if you are experiencing it or you've got a client experiencing it it's like really really good to see because this is, the, this is the thing that's been holding them back for years and years and years. And as long as you can work with the individual to make the experience um, not as bad as it, what it can be for some people, then that's fantastic. <clears throat> um, there is other things that I've, I'm really liking at the moment that's, that seems to be so, sorting out copper um, much, much easier from my experience. I'm going to be talking about that in a future video um but yeah um this is basically just um 
uh, a discussion about uh, how to deal with copper on, you know, when people are having copper dumps. So that's something to be really, really careful about. All right, so moving on. So we've moved on from slow oxidation now to fast oxidation. So generally people in fast, fast oxidation is a little bit more difficult to wrap your head around, but again, hopefully I'll explain it in this video and the application does a pretty good job at figuring things out too. So people who are in fast oxidation generally are copper deficient. Generally they've, they've got, they haven't got enough copper um, and they sort of need to be, um, they need to supplement copper, um, which helps them in this particular pattern. However, you do need to be aware of what I mentioned in this, um, when I was talking about this particular pattern, is that, and it is rare to see, to be honest, so don't have to worry about it too much. But sometimes when people begin um, a program and this is their initial test, as you can see, this is the initial test because we can't see the retest. Sometimes people show fast oxidation um, and they've still got like hidden, a lot of hidden copper toxicity indicators underneath. It won't actually show on the test too much. So this person's got two hidden copper toxicity indicators at the moment. But like I said to you before, if, and this is where again, some practitioner um, intuition comes in. And like I say, it is fairly rare, so you don't have to worry about it too much. But sometimes if someone's got like a lot of hidden copper symptoms, you know, insomnia, racing mind, skin problems, candida, and they present themselves with a fast oxidation rate. Usually this person has so many toxins and so many toxic metals and toxic minerals inside of them that it's basically stimulating the body to such an extent that they're in fast oxidation. Um, generally on initial tests, um, we call fast oxidation, um, it's basically a stress response. Um, so usually after a while, if people are in fast oxidation, they'll come down into slow oxidation if they keep doing the same bad things that they've been doing for a long time, or they're in sort of temporary fast oxidation because basically toxic metals have pushed up this oxidation rate um, and it's sort of um, it's a, sort of like false stimulation so again um, you've got to be aware of like how long people have been on the program whether it's initial test or not um, because a lot of these play a lot of Im important roles so this this person that it's important to realize that if someone does present themselves with, with this sort of test, although um, it's likely they've got toxins pushing, pushing, uh, pushing up the oxidation rate and the sodium potassium, they still should be given the same program for a fast oxidizer. Basically, you should should still treat them the same way um, with the same program. And uh, usually, after a while, the the true nature or the true hidden patterns will present themselves on a hair test. Um, and that's when you start seeing the symptoms match up with the hair test much better. Basically, once you've detoxed a person a little bit from various things that can stimulate the, the body and keep them in fast oxidation. So like, like I say, you treat this individual as a fast oxidizer. I'm not gonna go into that too much, but generally fast oxidizers meet, need more fats and oils in the diet. Um, this individual has got a low NAK ratio, so they should be showing two indicators. Yeah, so we've got another tick here and, and basically a need for copper supplementation. So they need copper because they're currently in a fast oxidation rate and they also need a little bit of copper because their NAK ratio is low. Um, so like I say, probably on this particular test, because it's an initial one, usually what you'll see as they start a mineral balancing program, they all detox and remove most of the stuff that basically propping up these this level here and then they'll generally fall into a pattern that's much more realistic in terms of what's going off underneath um so hope that will make sense so moving on to the next one um <clears throat> this is called a step up pattern so this is actually quite a dangerous pattern to be honest um you do see it now and again as a practitioner and uh, usually if you see a pattern like this you, you've kind of got to get in touch with the client quite quickly um, and just get them to basically slow down and do the program 
Um, basically, what this pattern is, is basically a fast oxidation rate. So the sodium potassium are higher relative to calcium magnesium. You've got a low NAK ratio. So you've, we've got one need for copper because they're in fast oxidation. Um, they've got another need for copper because they're in a low NAK. And then they've got one extra need for copper. Um, I think I need to refresh this page because we've had a bit of a computer glitch. So I'll just refresh this report. I've only got that so many tabs up it can just um, glitch out a little bit. I'll just wait, wait a couple of seconds for this to load up. So yeah, hopefully you're understanding you know, how complex it is on the hair analysis. It's not complex when you know what you're talking about, but a lot of people think they understand hair tests and they'll just like debunk hair tests straight away because they don't really know how to read it properly. Uh, and I guess this is what this video is all about. So like I was saying to you before, we've got a need for copper with the fast oxidation, we've got a need for copper with the low NAK ratio, we've got one more need for copper, or one indicator basically, it's probably a better way to describe it, um, with a hair calcium magnesium that's less than three to one. So we've got three ticks here. Um, so, and we've got a little red danger sign here because this individual's in a step up pattern. Um, so yeah, it's a fast oxidation pattern. It's associated with acute stress, emotional immaturity, <clears throat> inflammation, irritability, frustration, resentment. It's usually a fast death pattern. You don't really want to scare people too much with, with saying that. Um, but it's basically, the, the reason why it's called that is just to like say to people, look, if you keep on doing what you're doing, you're basically setting your up, setting yourself up as a, you know a bit of a death wish kind. Of, it's probably the best way to describe it. If you imagine someone who just maybe doesn't never slows down, you know, parties too much, maybe maybe takes a lot of drugs um, like cocaine or stimulants. Um, they're just like chronic over exercises, maybe marathon runners, stuff like that. Generally, these people. Um, are in a, in a pattern that's really, really bad for them. It's fast and reckless. Um, and, you know, sometimes you can see things like heart attacks and strokes and seizures if this individual doesn't really slow down. Basically, what's happening on a biochemical level is the oxidation rate sped up. So it's a little bit like going down the fast lane of a motorway with the pedal to the metal, you know, 200 mile an hour down the, down the fast lane. But the calcium magnesium is so low that it's not really protecting, you know, the car. So, so the, the car bonnet's coming off, and the you know the the doors are coming off, um, and it's they're in a very unhealthy pattern because of the, you know, the low NAK. So that's that's the way that I sort of like imagine it and, and and explain to people. And as you can imagine, if you keep on doing that and you don't take the foot off the foot off the gas and start rebuilding the car then you're going to be in a pretty, pretty bad situation. But for these particular people, they actually need copper, um, but they also need, you know, other things like calcium, magnesium. And um, they basically, I mean, copper's just not going to solve this problem, even though they really need it. So copper will help them out a lot. It'll make them mellow out quite a bit, um, which is really, really good. Um, but they also need like a, you know, a good, a good chat and a good conversation and try and figure out what's going off, what's causing them to, to live in such a way, what unhealthy mental patterns are, are keeping them stuck in this particular situation. Um, because yeah, like I say, it's, it's pretty dangerous. So like that, like this, this comes up, you know, now and again, and it is really important because there is a big need for copper in these people, but there's also a big need for, for other things and a big need for sort of talking to them and, and trying to explain to the, you know, trying to figure out what's causing them to live their life in such a way. Again, another reason why the hair analysis um, is, you know, such a, um, such a, such an amazing, accurate um, test 
is that uh, whenever you see this pattern, you can guarantee that you will see this individual that's literally like running themselves to death. Um, whether it be through some sort of mental situation that they're in or physical or um, it's, they're very, very accurate. Um, you get a lot of people saying that hair analysis is, is, is you know, inaccurate, but when it's done properly and it's read properly, um, you know, a lot of people think that I'm some sort of wizard because I can sort of like read the test and like tune into people and say, well, this is going off, that's going off. You know, how do you have this lifestyle? And people are like, how do you know this? Um, but basically it's because, you know, you can, you can see it on the test. It's like super, super accurate. So I just wanted to highlight that test because that's the only test, um, only pattern that you will see where the application will actually show you free ticks for a need for copper. <clears throat> so moving on, uh, this is my retest. Um, I wanted to show you this because sometimes you've got to like, um, so this is the... Uh, initial test for a uh, fast oxidizer this was one of my retests so sometimes as a practitioner you've got to like think how long has someone been doing the program um to to or to also add that level like level of experience and knowledge on top of the test so i've been doing it for 11 years so you know when you look at this particular one whenever you're looking at someone in fast oxidation you, you either have tired fast oxidation or like what we call healthy fast oxidation um, so, two minutes, yeah, so I'm not actually, well, I'm a fast oxidizer, but we, we have like mild, mild, fast, fast, and extreme fast, and like mild, slow, slow, and extreme slow. If you sort of like mild, slow, or mild, fast, it's not too bad of a, an oxidation rate. Um, so you do want to be bringing it down a bit, but like I said before, you sort of had, you have like tired fast oxidizer, which is a fast oxidizer with a low NAK like this one, where the sodium is lower than potassium, and then you get like a healthy fast oxidizer, which is um, where the sodium is higher than potassium. But you know, like I said on this one, let's say that their sodium is higher than potassium, and they're showing a lot of symptoms. Then usually you can you know, say to the individual that you, actually what's going off is that um, you've got various hit, uh, toxins that are basically propping up um, this oxidation rate and um, um, making the test um, show patterns that are not quite uh, reality. So as soon as them toxins have been removed, then, you know, this pattern will disappear. Generally, whereas someone who's been doing it for a long time you know, I don't have any symptoms. Well, I don't have any symptoms. If you know, you feel good, then you can sort of read it differently and say, well, you know, you're in sort of like healthy fast oxidizer. You know, you do need to, you know, I do need to sort of have a little bit, a bit of zinc to bring this down. But it, 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 it comes to a point whereby, um, you know, a lot of people say, well, where should I be? You know, what? When do I know a copper? Is it a good level? So, you know, generally when people have been doing the test, uh, doing the program for a long time, generally what will happen is the hidden copper toxicity indicators will come way down. And obviously the symptoms will come way down as well. Um, and that's when you start seeing, or you can sort of like mix people's symptoms with the hair test and the time they've been doing the program and basically figure out well this is not a bad test really um, and you start getting into sort of management stages where you're sort of managing stuff so in terms of me i need to manage my nak a little bit by bringing it down um but um generally because i've been doing it for a long time um you know i don't feel sometimes even when you get a high nak like this you don't sleep very well but um, because I've dumped a lot of toxins over the years and stuff, um, you start to see healthier tests. And if you go down to my, my copper section, um, you can see that I have got fast oxidation rate, so there's a need for copper. 
and I've got one hidden copper toxicity indicator. So basically, you know, once that goes down the mercury level, I'll have no hid hidden copper toxicity indicators. You also know when someone's got a decent test because they've got no adrenal burnout indicators. So if you like look at this one, for example, you scroll down, they've got 10 copper toxicity indicators. They've got three adrenal burnout indicators. Um, so when you start looking at this, probably will have even more. This one's got four. So again, um, you start seeing good tests when, you know, the first four pattern is pretty, not too bad. So, you know, this is not too bad of a pattern. If you got like a four lows or three lows or like four highs or, um, you know, that those are pretty bad patterns, but this one's not too bad. It's called the three highs pattern. Um, which just basically, you know, means that I need to just settle down a little bit, which is probably true um, recently. But like I say, you, you start getting into management levels um, when you've been doing things for a long time. But the hair analysis generally does show, um, you know, how a person's feeling pretty well. So like I say, there is also a little green indicator here that says, uh, please note, usually when the copper level is below 1.5, this is an indicator of hidden copper in slow oxidizers. However, for fast oxidizers, this can often be a sign of copper deficiency. So, because my copper's low here, this could actually be a sign that I just need extra copper in my diet at the moment, which is a far cry from where I was 11 years ago because um, my test was looking more like the initial ones that you know more well not not like that it was more like this one um you know this is usually more common in women to be honest like seeing a calcium shell but i think um if you brought the magnesium right down here to like three or four and uh you know, calcium level maybe I can't remember what my calcium level was, but I was in a three lows pattern, which is basically like burn, burned out, car in the ditch with the wheels spinning, burned out pattern. Um, my NAK ratio was low, so like you push the potassium up, but this is not a great pattern to be in this particular test. And you can definitely tell just by looking at the symptom sheet and talking to an individual. So finally, I thought I'd show you like a bit of a perfect test. Um, <clears throat> obviously, this is quite rare to see. Um, my test isn't bad, really. To be fair, I mean, once I bring my you know, once I bring my oxidation rate down a bit, my previous test wasn't too bad. I still got some work to do, but yeah, I mean, once you start, you know getting your levels really close to ideal you start getting to a point whereby you get a nice shiny orange sunshine <laughs> where you have no no copper toxicity indicators um but there is little messages on the on the app that will say look sometimes very rarely you'll find a test that has no copper toxicity indicators and they've just began and they've clearly got problems, um, then the app will talk about, you know, because it's like an initial test, um, probably various um, levels being propped up artificially by toxins. <clears throat> and if the person does a retest or a few retests, you'll generally see the true, a, tr a more truer pattern show. Sure. But like I say, usually it's pretty accurate. You, you do start to see, you see something like this. So that's everything for this uh, copper deep dive. Hope it's helped out quite a bit. Um, talking about all the different aspects of copper and copper toxicity and copper deficiency on hair tests. Um, if you do want to, um, to uh, use my report, if you, you can use it, whether you're a practitioner or an individual, um, 
please check out hairanalysis.report. Um, but yeah, basically this video was just talking about how you can't just look at a copper level on a hair test and read it as is. There's so many other indicators. And like I say, this application will figure out, do the vast majority of the heavy lifting. However, it is very important to also work with a practitioner because then they can add another level of expertise, uh, which is based on how long you've been doing the program for um, and, uh, you know, other factors um, like, you know, fast oxidation patterns and, and stuff like that. Sometimes, for example, people will go into fast oxidation because they're dumping toxic potassium. So um, a computer generated report, in my opinion, the more I work on this, the more complex and advanced it will get. And I think it will be able to figure out the vast majority of things, but you can never 100% um, rely on it. You need a, uh, an expert. So if you are an individual and you do want to sign up for this, you can use it, but please make sure you're working with a practitioner too. Um, so that's everything. Thanks for watching. Hope this has helped you out a lot and I'll speak to you soon.